and uh, welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, I bought another toy for the ham shack, and uh, that little toy is uh, what you're looking at right now. It's a high gain DCU3 uh, digital rotor controller. And you know, if you remember, I had the old. Uh, manual type uh, rotor controller in the shack. I still have it. It's boxed up just in case I need it as a backup. But stepped out at uh, Hamcom and bought myself a digital rotor controller as you can see here. Right now it's pointed generally north in a northerly direction so I'm going to take you through some of the controls and then uh, I'm going to do a little combination screen capture and kind of show you how this ties in to the computer with some free software where you can control the rotor actually from the computer. Or you can do it manually and that's what I'm going to do right now. So anyway, uh, let's just touch any key and the display comes back on. And let's go through some of these buttons that you see here. Obviously it's turned on right now and this is the power button. This red button right here is the power button. Uh, you can manually rotate the antenna to the right or the left with these two buttons just like you would uh, my old uh, uh, analog type controller. So you can just push these and the antenna will rotate. You can also use this knob and you can set a certain direction which you can see on the meter. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to uh, set it to like 40 degrees. All right. And then by pressing the center red button, it goes through a little gyration where it backs up the antenna for a second to release the brake. Automatically releases the brake. And then it starts turning the rotor uh, to whatever you selected here. And uh, if we went outside right now, I guarantee you it would be about 40 degrees right now if we went out there. So uh, uh, pretty neat deal. You can do it manually if you want to just by turning this knob. It's also got six memory positions. Uh, I'm not going to take you through that. They can be set to anything you want directional wise. I set mine to various places starting with Japan here, coming back to uh, Hawaii, Alaska, uh, Europe, uh, further over in Europe. You know I did it globe wise but you could just as well do you know north, south, east, west, and a couple of uh, uh, directions like Europe or Japan at the bottom. You can do it however you want. And all you have to do to save it is to actually rotate the antenna to that position and hold down this button and uh, for about three or four seconds and it will say the word program right here and that means that it's programmed that direction into that button. So very easy to use, uh, kind of like the radio in your car. You remember you'd hold down the button and it would remember the channel. It works kind of the same way. Now in the back, uh, I'm not going to pull it out and disconnect it. In the back there's a serial port and a USB port. And you can use either type cable. Uh, there is a jumper switch uh, inside in the top I believe if I remember right and it's very easy to set if you're gonna use a regular serial cable you put it to the right jumper and if you're gonna use a USB cable you put it to the left jumper took all of about two minutes to do that so I've got a USB cable and that's what I'm using right now so uh, works pretty neat as a standalone unit as you can see you can fully operate it uh, without it being connected to the computer but the neat part of it is to be able to connect it to a computer and then use the computer 
to turn the rotor and we're going to show you that in a minute uh, with a little screen capture and uh, I'll do a uh, audio uh, background after I do the screen capture and kind of take you through some of the free software a couple of programs that you can uh, get for free to uh, control the antenna from the computer using a DCU3 by high gain. So let's uh, pause right here. I'll move over to the computer and do a little screen capture. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> now we're looking at the screen and uh, what you're looking at right now is Ham Radio Deluxe uh, version uh, 5. That's version 5. I don't have version 6. I'm uh, cheap ham. And uh, what I'm showing you right now is just a little bit about the screen itself uh, that you get when you open up the rotor control in Ham Radio Deluxe. And uh, as you can see, uh, there's some settings you need to pay attention to. And uh, you have to connect. You have to make sure you're on the right COM port that you have the COM port selected right and then you have to make sure that you have the actual rotor control controller set right which in this version is DCU1 uh, it works with DCU3 and 4 and as you can see I'm kinda of moving the uh, cursor around uh, the screen and it shows the direction for that particular place on the globe and you just simply double click when you reach the spot you want the antenna to go you just double click it and the antenna goes uh, rotates to that direction it's just that simple and of course you can uh, put in a location there's a location box you can select and you can select uh, put in a call sign and uh, select that and it will move to that call sign very easy to do Gosh. well I dropped the mic how about that anyway uh, let's continue on uh, I'm open up a few programs another one called uh, DX view DX view you can download that. It's part of the DX uh, series of free software but each one's individual so here's the rotor controller and as you can see you get a little global map uh, with some zones on it regions and uh, you can select different countries of course there's a whole list of uh, entities that you can select uh, you need to go into the uh, configuration and make sure you enable the rotor controller. And again, you got to select the proper rotor and the proper COM port down there, which is 15 in my case. Make sure uh, these are usually set up right, but make sure the uh, bit selection is set right. And uh, all of a sudden those two buttons become active the short path and the long path and you just click it and the antenna rotates to either the short path or the long path depending on which one you clicked so uh, very simple to use uh, it also shows that path on the little world map up at the top after you've selected it Again, you can do it by call sign or by country, you know, either way. It's got a lot more features in it. You can read about them uh, than just uh, those two. There's some reporting features uh, on PSK Reporter and some other things you can uh, also enable. But uh, very simple operate. You see I clicked it again and I'm moving to that heading on the antenna. Uh, right now and uh, it's not quite as visual uh, presentation as ham radio deluxe rotor but uh, seems to work just fine and uh, it's an awful small program doesn't take up much space on your hard drive 
and uh, runs okay in Windows 7, no problem. I'm going through some of the uh, map uh, features. You know, they've got everything you'd ever need in the way of uh, showing the Maidenhead or the ITU zone or the CQ zone or the regions or whatever else you'd like to look at just by clicking those uh, little buttons there on the bottom left. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, I was going to select the uh, ham radio folder and I accidentally selected uh, as usual uh, Firefox, but here we go. And here's my little ham radio folder and just going to show you a few of the softwares again that I use all the time. And here's JT65HF. Uh, I use that all the time now on JT65 contacts. You can see the rotor control right next to JT65 there. That's the Ham Radio Deluxe rotor control. It kind of looks like uh, the University of Texas Longhorn. I don't know why, but uh, anyway, here is uh, FL Digi and uh, use that for PSK31 all the time. Works quite well. It does have a bunch of other modes that also work very well. Here is uh, WSJTX uh, uh, by uh, Joe Taylor and uh, works just fine. I'm showing you that there's some setups you have to do in J and WJSTX that uh, you have to set up before it'll work and uh, especially that uh, push to talk button uh, seems to be the only thing that's a little problem. Here's my flex settings uh, with line one at the top and line two at the bottom for my audio connections in there. Now here is uh, Whisper, another one of uh, Joe Taylor's software packages. It's kind of a neat package. Uh, transmit it you know, seven watts or five watts or three watts or two watts and see how far it'll go. And here's the setup screen for that particular uh, piece of software, Whisper. And it kind of operates all by itself. It's like a reverse beacon in a way. And uh, you can receive transmissions and you can send transmissions uh, just to see how far your signal will go. And looking around there, there there's uh, NIST time. NIST time. Uh, you've heard me talk about it. Make sure that it has connected to the server before you do now. But as you can see, uh, you click uh, uh, server now, and it will reset the clock. Uh, and in my case, I think it was to uh, three tenths of. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little quick video on the uh, little digital rotor controller, the DCU1-3 uh, by High Gain, and uh, really makes uh, operating uh, DX uh, a lot quicker and easier when you can reach it from the computer screen uh, without having to worry about uh, the brake or releasing the brake or. Uh, putting the brake on too fast or doing any of that. It does all that for you automatically. One more thing that you should know about it is if you push on this uh, little button right here and hold it for about three seconds, you get a setup menu. And there's a lot of parameters you can set in the setup menu that's uh, inside this unit. Again, you just hold this button down for about three seconds and the menu will pop up and then you use the knob to scroll through the menu and push it to select. Uh, one of the most important things in there is to calibrate the rotor stops both to the left and the right. Very simple to do. You simply rotate the antenna to let's say the left stop and uh, then you turn to calibrate and press a left stop and it remembers that location. You do the same thing over at the right stop and then it's calibrated to the antenna uh, direction. <clears throat> so uh, very easy to set up 
uh, it was uh, the the hardest part of it was I forgot about the com ports. Uh, be sure that when you do set this up on a com port, that it's not going to interfere with some other equipment you have. I've got a lot of things on this computer that are using com ports, and it had selected one uh, by itself that uh, was being used by the Flex Radio. So I had to go in there and uh, tell Windows to assign COM15 to this device. That's just the one I picked because it was up in numbers and away from everything else. So I went into Windows, selected COM15, told it to use COM15, and then from then on, I uh, never uh, conflicted with any of the other COM ports that were already set up uh, in my computer. So with that said, as I usually do, I wish you clear skies in 73, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. It's still up there, and I get out in the front yard and look at it all the time. Anyway, everybody be good. Thanks for dropping by. See y'all in the next day.